Oh, look, shipping fuel right at the end of the episode. Nice how they put it in the credits, so probably none of the kids heard it. <laughs> I, I was talking more about how they were interacting with each other at the end of the episode. Like, oh, you're nice, and they're kind of doing a whole hoof scuffle thing. Yeah, but the fandom doesn't seem to be very much in favor of straight ships, so... <laughs> You think that stops them? <laughs> no. I mean, there's quite literally a fan fiction out there called Rainbow Dash Shipped with Everything. <sighs> but moving on. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episode 13. Stranger than fan fiction. That's pretty strange. Mm-hmm, especially some of the fan fictions I've read. Uh, let's just say I've dived into some of the sections that aren't quite the kitty section of the pool. Ah, <laughs> uh, but moving on, I quite enjoyed this episode. Yes, but it's another Daring Do episode, so prepare for the fandom to be split again. <laughs> uh, yeah, one, one of my friends... It's just like the pony is like, yeah, I'm not really into these Daring Do episodes ever since they made her real. I just don't find it right because I always saw it as being Rainbow Josh's imagination projecting Daring Do to look like her. Like, But on, in the episode itself, the cover of the books actually shows that that's exactly what Daring Do looks like. <laughs> yes, and pony palette color swaps for new ponies is a common tactic. My problem is the items I stated before with how is she pinning this stuff as fiction and getting away with it? <laughs> also, she's a pegasus. Why walk across the rickety bridge ever? Mm -hmm. Also, why walk across the stones? And also, why worry about the stones falling away when you can just, I don't know, use your wings? They clearly weren't injured in that intro scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, and speaking of that intro scene, I felt sorry for Twilight, but I also went, Stop guilt-tripping, poor Rainbow Dash. I don't think you're realizing you're doing it, but you're guilt-tripping the poor lady. <laughs> I was mainly thinking, quit whining, Twilight. You spent most of season four feeling like a useless princess that had no purpose. And you spent a good five minutes, at least, whining about how you couldn't go to Griffinstone because the Table Tree Castle map didn't send you. Now you're going to Griffinstone in your role as a princess, and you're whining that you can't go to a convention. <laughs> Ah, uh, but she is a bit of a book nerd, so it may be just her fan side overriding her more logical side. At the same time, she personally knows AK Yearling, so what at a convention would really appeal to Twilight? She has all the books. I don't see her collecting statuary. She's not a particularly physical pony, so doing all the jumps and fake stunts and stuff. We have no idea what the panels are like, because we didn't hear about any panels. Well, that was, I want some of that stuff that was at that convention. <laughs> I wouldn't mind going to it. Well, I'm sure there'll be some at the next convention we go to. Also, it is nice to find another fan who is into a series just as much as you are. Especially when you meet them at a convention and you get to talk about all the stuff that's going on there. Mm hmm It's really interesting. Until you find that point where you guys disagree. And it takes them the rest of the episode to realize that you can agree to disagree. And why is it so important to Rainbow Dash that Quibble like the remaining books? They were having a great time. So why is this such a serious flaw? And why couldn't you have a rational discussion instead of going straight to almost blurting out the secret that AK Yearling is Daring Do, Daring Do is real, and I've been on an adventure with her, and therefore I know all this to be possible. Why don't you pull out, oh, because I'm a member of the Wonderbolts and I can perform a sonic rain boom. Oh, and I'm a member of the six ponies who repeatedly save Equestria, so I know I'm capable of doing all that stuff, therefore another pony would probably also be capable of doing all that stuff. Yeah, I was just about to bring up that point. She had a very valid reason without even having to say anything about it. Like, Dude, I'm a bearer of harmony. My hair went all rainbow and, and extensions, and I, I kicked the um, tail of a giant six-limbed creature with horns that used magic blasts. I be literally saw a Dragon Ball Z fight happening in front of me. Also, I've seen the question multiple times, 
including that time. So yeah, that stuff's pretty tiddly winks to what I've done. <laughs> yeah, and she could have made her argument logically, but instead she had to be stubborn and go, you're stupid, therefore I'm right. But going to this new pony, Quibble Pants, interesting name. I don't mind the first name, but Pants? Pants. I like his design. He's actually slightly chubby, which is kind of a nice thing to see different body types other than extreme this way, extreme that way, or the perfect right in the middle that all the main six are. <laughs> He's just slightly chubby, which I'm like, that, that makes perfect sense for a convention. <laughs> we don't always take care of ourselves. Though boy, have I gotten exercise recently. Thank you, Pokemon Go. <laughs> I know. I'm having withdrawals. I barely have 2,000... I don't even have 2,000 steps on my counter today. <laughs> uh, I think I was just 1,000 or 1,015 last time I looked. Oh, well, mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with the episode. Moving on! Though they did do a lot of steps. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, apparently they should be getting frequent flyer miles. Ah. <sighs> uh... And why did it take him so long? I guess because of how stubborn he was to go, wait a minute, this is real? Though I did like the moment where he went, oh, this is real. That's real! <laughs> and I also got to give props to the voice actor for him. He nailed his role. Yes, well, if you think about it, we kept seeing the Daring Do experience pushed at the convention. So, of course, he's going to figure that that's what's going on, you know, and don't know if um, Calvest was in the earlier books for sure, though he'd have to be because Quibble liked the way he was written as a villain but didn't care for the logic of him in real life, which is interesting. In my theory, what's going on is in the earlier books, there were the villains and Daring Do were getting to know each other, and as they got to know each other, they got lazier about how they did things. So they, they also started to try to come up with more and more extraordinary plans to try to get rid of Daring Do because they're getting more and more frustrated over time. So that's why everything starts to get very cliche and very, um, oh, there's another word I think starts with C or a C sound. Convoluted, there's the word. And things got more and more convoluted down the road and less believable because the villains kept trying to like, how do we get rid of Daring Do? And Daring Do just, over time, got so used to how the villains were doing things that she kind of got lazy about how she does things. Well, that's the thing. If it works, why stop? And earlier on, they wouldn't know each other's strengths and weaknesses. Because, of course, now the villains know, oh, you know, she won't let these innocent ponies suffer. So all we have to do is kidnap someone. Mm -hmm. Also, his plan wasn't really that complicated. Capture people Daring Do cares about, draw her out, get the treasure she has. Yeah, not really that convoluted, mm -hmm. but very cliche. And also it might have to do with the treasures that Daring was going after. You know, hmm. things that occurred in the first books might have had more complicated puzzles. You know, all these mysterious temples can't be equal. Though, I took a moment to actually pause the video and look at the map Daring do rolled out. You actually see all the stuff that Rainbow Dash and Quibble go through in that map, it points out the waterfall, it points out a couple other things, and you're like, oh, eh, nice little foreshadowing there. Mm -hmm. And going back to the convention, because we didn't mention it yet, nice touch of that drawing that Fluttershy did of a Rama style pony for her Halloween episode being in the background. So does that mean that Fluttershy was at the convention, that that is somehow a character in the Daring Do series because it was specifically a Daring Do convention. So there should only be items directly related to Daring Do. Yeah, that's another thing. And Or is it just, or did Fluttershy just do a really good drawing of the character? Well, hers wasn't that large, so it would have to be another drawing. Uh, another little thing, not to be within the MLP world, it might have been just the animators being lazy, they needed some background art. Oh, this one's good. <laughs> Or just a callback to another episode. Mm -hmm, that too. That's most likely the thing that happened is they went, ah, oh, let's call back to this episode. Slap. <laughs> yeah, I liked it. And I actually kind of surprised that Daring Do didn't arrive sooner, but I guess she was a little bit farther behind than usual. It also gave opportunities for him to be like, wait a minute. <laughs> Though I did like the bridge scene because of that one moment where they're walking along, and he stops and goes, 
Yeah, if this was a terrible daring do book, I would step on a bad board at just the wrong moment! <laughs> <laughs> and right after the struggle, he's hanging upside down. Get your money back. <laughs> uh, it's just because the voice actor for him did such a good job in this episode. He delivered his lines flawlessly. Uh, and of course, a nice surfing and I'm, I'm thinking the little spin and rope and vine break was a little overdoing it but hey it worked yeah and everything had to be over the top because things that happened had to be things that were unrealistic for quibble also it's kind of interesting how his uh cutie mark is a speech bubble mm -hmm. and speaking of cutie marks if i paid attention to it correctly i think one of the henchmen Actually, his cutie mark is all the symbols that are usually used alongside sound effects like pow, boom, and womp, and all those other <laughs> sound effects. Rather fitting. Yep, I was like, oh, that, that makes sense. And another thing I liked the design of in this episode is the alligator creature. It really fit with the aesthetic of Daring Do, but it also fit very well in the MLP world. It was nice. It wasn't... You know, ridiculously over the top. Though the wall breaking from Daring Do throwing that one little stone, a little bit. Yeah, that was a nice little end there. But yeah, that's another favorite moment of mine when that creature first appear and he's going, "It's real. This is real." <laughs> Once again, it's just the performance that does it for me there. <sighs> and of course, he, they both have to get saved by Daring Do, and he's like, "Whoa, huh?" You're real? Wait a minute, you know her? <laughs> yeah, so the only piece of the puzzle he's missing is that A.K. Yearling is Daring Do. Mm -hmm. Also, Rainbow Dash, get that smug look off your face. You look a little creepy there. Just a tad. Also, you guys aren't safe yet. You're still in the dang temple. And it's kind of interesting. He's a bit of a jerk, but I like the way he was played as a jerk. Unlike a certain other pony that didn't deserve a drawing... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I love Rainbow Dash going, going, yeah, he's like this all the time, but he's usually right. I'm like, really? Hmm. Yeah, because I'm like, okay, at, at what instances was it pointed out that he was right about things that Rainbow Dash was wrong about? Because up until the point where they had their fight, they were in total agreement, which means they high came to the same logical conclusions. I think the only thing you can really point back to is how quickly he solved the lock. Mm -hmm. Also, for a second there, I kind of went, Alicorns? Oh, yeah! I forgot Celestia and Luna are over a thousand years old. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean there couldn't have been legends about Alicorns before they existed. Though I do want an episode where we might go back in time and see the past and maybe canonize some of a certain book. <laughs> Maybe clear up some stuff about alicorns and stuff like that. Although I'd really just settle for an episode that completely focused on Celestia and Luna and they're just a day in the life of. Yeah, a slice of life episode would be nice. Because I doubt we're going to get the background episode you want. Especially with Hasbro adding more canon alicorns. Mm -hmm. We need to sell more toys. Kids seem to like these alicorns. Let's do that. Oh, it's another pink one. That will sell even better! Not really, no. Uh, but back to the episode. Uh, any more points, or were there more nitpicks you wanted to go over? <laughs> uh, most of my stuff regarding Daring Do we've covered in other recordings, so I don't want to repeat myself. I was also talking about anything particular that is just in this episode. You said most of it. I don't have a lot to nitpick. Most of my Daring ah. Do nitpicks are old. So I've only touched on aspects that were new to this episode. Okay, just to make sure. Hmm. So shall we wrap things up then? Mm-hmm. Ah, well, I really like this episode. I especially like the voice actor for Quibble Pants. That still feels odd saying that name, but he was a good character. Like I said, a little bit of a um, jerk, but I like the kind of jerk he was compared to Fluttershy's brother. I think it's because he was... Fletcher's brother was more of a user, and he was just a guy who was very opinionated. He was just very opinionated about his opinion on books. On those particular series of books, I should say. Uh, but overall, I enjoyed his character. I enjoyed his moments because he brought most of the comedy to the episode. And I can't wait for um, 
more episodes because, hey, we're out of this small hiatus we had. Mm -hmm. Well, I can very much empathize with Quipple because I've gotten turned off of some authors. You know, I started strong with them and then kept reading books within the same universe and, you know, they would violate their own canon, they would get repetitive, they would have errors that editors should have caught. So, so that's, that's something that I can understand of, you know, still being a fan and still wanting to go to a convention, but having to ignore certain areas of an author's work. Mm, I can understand that. Now that you brought it up in that way, in that context, it kind of hit me that I have issues with a certain series of books I've been reading where it seems like the author, apparently this author has a tendency to do this with other characters as well, turn their characters into a Mary Sue. <laughs> I'm like, but you do realize that the side characters are now more interesting than your main character, right? I want to know about these guys. Because that character, that character will pretty much be okay. <laughs> so yeah, I now sympathize with that with the way you put that. Hmm. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 6, Episode 13, Stranger Than Fan Fiction. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe. If you like my art, you can find me on Tumblr and DeviantArt. Or if you want to support me, you can go to my Patreon or check the link for commission availability.